I think between uh, both parties, they should stop bickering and ranting against one another and help people um, lead, take an active role, be consistent, be on one accord, um, because too many people have lost their lives um, due to this invisible demon. There's um, just too much at stake. Um, there's people being evicted, uh, unemployment, uh, just so many things. Um, they need to send COVID relief and send it fast. You know, one stimulus check, it wasn't enough. Um, we're like a couple of stimulus checks behind. <laughs> so if they would have just did what they should do instead of, well, well, okay, we'll make a decision this day. No, we'll make one this day. Okay, now we're taking a recess. They're doing all that, but then we the people, we're left behind. So I think if they would have just took care of us, you know, put all whatever they got going on, put it aside and meet the needs of the people first. I think that would have been um, a big help because the longer they wait and the longer they take, again, the more our livelihoods are at stake. They, they didn't act quickly enough in the first place. Um, and there was no uniformity against state lines. So I feel like it was a lack of leadership, especially with the information that I heard yesterday <laughs> is knowing about the virus but you didn't tell us about it because you didn't want us to panic. That's how, you know, I had COVID and I had it back in March. So when I had it, it was wash your hands, use hand sanitizer and don't shake hands. So if somebody would have been honest in the first place, I wouldn't have almost lost my life and been hospitalized twice. <laughs> it was a mess. Yes, because it seems like the rich is getting richer and the poor is getting poorer. And I think it would kind of help stimulate the economy. Again, with the stimulus checks, uh, maybe grants for the small businesses, because some people, they worked so hard for their businesses and just no one asked for COVID to come. You know, it's unexpected and it just hit. And these people, their, their livelihoods, you know, with their businesses, um, everything just kind of dwindled down. To where some people have nothing at all. So again, uh, that COVID release, relief, um, a stimulus package that would help, again, for small business individuals, um, unemployment benefits, uh, stop people from being evicted. Um, what is that? Um, I know what I want to say. I'm losing my thought. Oh, student loan debt, you know, because the interest, you know, they say they're doing something, but still, it's like, just eliminate that. A lot of people will never catch up with a lot of stuff. And like, we're still waiting on stimulus checks now. Some people are still so far behind with everything. That one check, it might not even help if it's not continuous until people can get back on their feet. still need to have another stimulus check. It's like, regardless, just and extend the unemployment benefits, you know, indefinite because starting and stopping and making people panic and it, it just causes too much stress and anxiety on people. Um, yeah, make provisions for healthcare insurance, you know, help with utility bills, you know, even cell phone bills because People need their phones to connect and talk and do what they need to do. There's so much that's needed right now. Um, it's just really sad. Again, it goes back to number one. If in the beginning, everything was conveyed the right way and took action right away, we probably wouldn't be in this much debt and everything that we're in right now. Combat police misconduct, um, the excessive force, the 
racial bias in policing, um, no qualified immunity, meaning if the officers did something wrong, you know, they need to be held accountable. Um, report misconduct, um, because like if someone gets fired, they can just go to another police force and just get hired again and do the same thing over and over again. So that stuff, that information needs to be uh, distributed <laughs> to wherever um, some kind of file system where um, that person just can't get away with it, get hired and then just do the same thing in another community. Um, also, you know, remove the corrupt corruption and make sure there's more diversity, more people of color uh, and women on the police force. I think that would help and just figure out a way to bring more minorities in. So if we look at the rest of the world, uh, look at the amount of mass murders that are in the United States compared to other countries, you know, to other places in the world. Um, there is no form of gun control. I support criminal background checks um, and waiting periods for purchasing guns. And um, people should take a mandatory safety course and no assault rifles or, you know, high capacity magazines. That's... Uh, that I think that might reduce some and just get the guns off the street. Yeah, however possible. Just reporting that information to, um, you know, when someone goes to try to purchase a gun. Um, if someone has a mental background, well, you know, health issues, they shouldn't be able to purchase a gun. If someone has uh, a background history of abuse and, you know, just things like that. They need to just check. I just have some concerns that some of the federal agents may uh, use excessive force and abuse their force. Um, I see that it's getting some people arrested and off the streets, which is a good thing. But uh, it's still questionable with some people and their motives that are in the uniforms. I don't feel it's always safe for everyone. So it seems like it escalates tension maybe too, like there's an overstep of um, federal force. No, because there are people with pre-existing conditions and that just leaves them out. Um, it would make it, it impossible for them to get health care. They shouldn't touch it. They should make it stronger that everyone has health care and make it affordable for everyone. Make sure that people have their prescriptions that are affordable. People shouldn't have to choose between paying a bill and having a prescription for their livelihood because it's a matter of life and death for some individuals. Everyone deserves it. It should be a human right with health care. Uh, people should be able to vote absentee ballot um, due to COVID-19. Um, there's a, some other states that are doing it, and I think they should just allow it to happen just so everyone can make that vote. It's our right to vote. And with this pandemic, you know, that's no one's personal problem that it happened, but the federal should make sure that everyone can vote. Don't penalize somebody because of COVID and then won't allow them to vote. A commitment. I would make is to be the change that I want to see. No county left behind in my district or anywhere else. I truly want to represent people. It's people first, not party first. It's people first. You know, these are taxpayers um, and, and just citizens. We deserve to be treated 
with all dignity and respect, liberty, equality, and justice for all. And it seems like there's been a lack thereof. So I would do my part. And I also would plan to have town hall meetings and, you know, just stay in touch and communicate, not only come around when it's time for election time. You need to talk to the people and build relationships with them and network with key stakeholders and, you know, just try to see what we can do to make it better for all of us. Because as I always say, business as usual is no longer acceptable. People need to be held accountable. It's like lead, follow, or get out the way. If you're going to be in office, then do your job and, and really be a public servant. 